When the postman delivers the mail here in the Bay Area, sometimes he or she is greeted by a dog, but not in Sonoma. The postman there was greeted by a camel. The sign says it all. Absolutely no animals in the famous Sonoma Town Square. Well, except the camel. Believe it or not, our code does not address camels. Police Chief John Gurney tells his force to turn the other cheek. Maybe because Cassie the camel, who goes for walks around town, is a miracle worker. She'll give you a kiss, yeah. <laughs> the gratification and the reward is just seeing people smile. This 1,000-pound gentle giant has brought joy to the elderly, helped the sick recover faster. It's Animal Therapy 101, the passion of owners Rob and Robin Lyon. We're with her for the first 21 days of her life. One of us was always with her, and we were sleeping with her in the stalls. We fed her her bottle and, and lay down right beside her. Rob, a former airline pilot, and Robin, his frequent flight attendant, soon married and then retired. Their Sonoma Ranch became a haven for rescued animals. I knew that um, I had this dream that, that I was going to have a big ranch with lots of animals and, and save them all and put them to good use. This is Fillmore, and Fillmore's from the Fillmore area of San Francisco. Oh, Shadow, that's not very ladylike. These are little donkeys that needed homes. This one was too big for the show circuit. Come on, Cynthia! From miniature horses to Polish chickens, Chester, the hybrid serval, to pygmy goats, the vacancy sign was always on. One day, Robin told Rob she needed a camel. No, we're not gonna get a camel. Son of a gun, we got her, and I'm the one that you know, kind of fell in love with her. And... No, you can't have the coffee, you can't have the banana. Cassie, who is still a thousand pounds shy of total weight, is slowly outgrowing visits into the house. Yeah, she loved to ring the doorbell because she knew we'd answer the door. So she'd come up on the front porch. Hi, Cassie. And ring the doorbell because mommy danced at the door. Yes. <laughs> well, she loves to get in because she knows she's going to go see people. The lions and their pals make three to four visits a week. The animals clearly make a normal day much brighter. Oh, I love birds. I love you, yes. Terry loves to get in your hair. Now, this is Cassie. Here's the camel. Oh, she's darling. I'd like to take her home. I That's wish I had sweet. eyelashes like that. <laughs> We've made a lot of changes to our lifestyle. We don't travel anymore, but then we can't. We have 82 animals at home that need to be cared for. <laughs> And now you might know why Chief Gurney turns the other cheek. Every town needs a Cassie the camel. And so we need to get a uniform for her and uh, a slobber pad, but it's okay. It's <laughs> ABC 7 News at 5. Now Cassie the camel is lifting the spirits of hospital patients in the Bay Area. Just ahead, you've heard of aromatherapy and hypnotherapy. How about animal therapy? Yeah, coming up next, how this camel is being used at one Bay Area hospital. Day, usually Wednesday, right. right? But for patients at a Berkeley hospital, it came today. Yeah, and not just the hump, a whole camel visited the <laughs> Alta Bates Medical Center's Herrick campus. Now, Cassie Darius is participating in what's called animal assisted therapy. Experts say all that unconditional animal love can lift even the most depressed patient's spirits and lower their blood pressure. Cassie, by the way, is a female Bactrian camel, meaning that she has two humps and one very big heart. She was awfully generous there with the patients today. And Cassie is just so mellow. You know, she enjoyed all that attention. Which is the point, I guess. <laughs> That's it for us. Stay tuned now for World News Tonight with Peter Jennings on ABC 7 News at 6. I'm Cheryl Jennings. And I'm Dan Ashley for Spencer Christian and all of us here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again with Jessica at 11 tonight. Attracting attention wherever she goes, Cassie the camel is more than a wonderful pet. She thinks my mom is her mom, and I have a big sister, and just like it's any family relationship. She's just like any pesky little sister. <laughs> now her tail's all wet.
In the heart of wine country in Sonoma, California, Robert and Robin Lyon have built the home they always dreamed of. He's a retired pilot, she's a former flight attendant. While the two used to jet around the world, now they live a quiet life on a ranch filled with some of their favorite animals. And we have a number of cats and dogs, horses that were rescue horses, miniature donkeys, a number of goats. And what is that? We have Cassie, our camel. A camel? In Sonoma? I got the idea for a camel when I met one. Her name was Spring, and she was a one-eyed camel, and it was, it was love at first sight. I talked to the owner, and actually I'd had hopes that perhaps one day Spring would be mine, but he found that he couldn't part with her, and so I began doing a lot of research and looking for breeders. Well, when she first suggested that she wanted a camel <laughs> or that we would even think about getting a camel, I, I really thought she was pulling my leg. And so I was trying to convey to Robin that, uh, hey, camels, you know, camels are not the world's best animals for bats. But she was rather determined. One of the reasons that I happened to choose the breeder that I did is that she was open to the idea that I wanted to take that was just a baby. She realized that we were truly committed. We weren't just going to spend a lot of money and bring home a camel and have it be a piece of yard art. We did sleep with her for the first 21 days. We also had bottle feeding, and it was a special formula that we used. And we had to feed her every two round the clock. Taking care of Cassie the camel and a ranch full of other animals is a lot of hard work. But Rob and Robin don't do it alone. They have help from their 12-year-old daughter, Lynette. I feed most of the animals, and that includes five parakeets, a little blind dog named Boo, around 20 chickens, five cats, and some horses, and Cassie the camel, and a bunch of goats. The pygmy goats and the camel, they get two or three flakes of alfalfa hay a day. Hi, Cassie! Cassie is now eight months old, and she has changed. Now she's huge, and She's a lot fuzzier, cuter in my opinion, and she's just the sweetest thing. And she thinks my mom is her mom, and I have a big sister, just like it's any family relationship. She's just like any pesky little sister. Oh, hello. Hello. Hello, honey. And as you can see, she's decided to butt into a conversation right now. I decided to butt in my conversations. Well, I would never not have a camel now that we've got her. Robin didn't adopt Cassie to just be a pet. She adopted Cassie to help with her volunteer work. I had done a lot of volunteering in nursing homes and hospitals with some of our other animals. And I talked to someone that had done this with a llama. And it was incredibly successful. And I believe that if she could do it with a llama, by golly, I can do it with a camel. And we have. And she does amazingly well. She's become very, very popular in the Bay Area. We receive calls several times a month, and she actually works four days a week as a volunteer. She just brings a lot of joy to the people that she comes in contact with. Training Cassie to do all this therapy requires a lot of time and commitment. We groom her, and we try to do a little bit of grooming every day. Not, not major grooming, not a full bath, but uh, just so that she's used to being touched and picked at and the stickers being pulled out. And then Rob will take her for a walk, or I'll take her for a walk, or we'll load her in the trailer and just go for coffee, and we'll take her to a park. Mm. There we go, girl. Oh, yeah. Let's get you cleaned up. You'll notice she has two humps. She's a crossbreed. Her mother was a dromedary, which is a one-hump camel, an Arabian camel. Uh, the father was a Bactrian camel, which is a two-hump camel. She came up with most of the characteristics of a Bactrian camel, but her legs are a little bit longer, similar to the dromedary camel. Now you happy, huh? Are you okay now? 
Huh. A lot of people don't realize camels are very, very verbal, very vocal. They're big talkers. So a lot of the sounds you will hear are not a sounds of displeasure. They're just communicating with us. It's sort of a moaning, humming, amplified goose sort of sound. You want to go for a ride? You want to go for a ride today? Come on. In order to prepare for a trip to a school later in the week, today they'll practice with her in town. Good girl. I like to walk around in town, and uh, she draws a lot of attention. And it's fun for me because people ask so many questions, and I enjoy uh, learning more about her by, if I don't know the answers to the questions, I'll come home and look them up or find out the answers. Well, come on, Cassie, you're ready to go. Hey, come on, big girl. Aww. And it's kind of a training day to keep her used to people. You picked up a lot of girlfriends along the way. <laughs> But I love the eyelash. She, your dog seems like it's all right. Do you ever ride her? She's a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Very sweet. She won't bite. She's just a sucking. <laughs> she likes. She loves me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, dear. <laughs> looking at everybody, looking at you. <laughs> and smile. <laughs> I didn't know their hair was so soft. Mommy, the camel's coming. I don't know she has been exposed to so much that we feel very comfortable taking her uh, into the park or around the plaza. She's very comfortable and she doesn't easily alarm. If there's ever a chance that she might be fearful, she looks to us first to see what our reaction is. And if we're calm, she's calm. You were a good girl. Oh, I can't do that. I can put the other one on. There's a girl. All of this socializing is very exhausting, so Cassie gets to go home for a well-deserved rest. Taking care of a pet camel also requires assistance from professionals. Today, Robert prepares Cassie for a visit from the vet. Peter's coming, yeah. I was raised on a farm, and my parents uh, allowed us to bring anything home. And I've sort of recreated that for my children. Although Rob was not used to that, he has a natural knack. He is just incredibly patient with these animals, and they adore him. Hush. Hi, Peter. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> Dr. Peter Ahern has been taking care of the lion's horses for years. It was only natural that he'd look after their camel as well. Hi, Cassie. I know. Yeah. Hi. Just remember not to stand in front of her too much. Yeah. yeah, right. And duck. She's been eating fine? She's been eating great. Okay. In fact, she's she's weaned now. She's completely weaned. Uh huh. So she her last milk was in uh, December, and then now she's eating like a horse. Oh, okay. She's eating hay and grain. And all good, that. good. Well, I'll take a listen to her heart and okay. her stomach and stuff. Ooh, I'll watch her. Easy. I'm a mobile vet and do large animals. I see their horses, and uh, they have some pygmy goats that I work on. They also have uh, some donkeys that we work on, and now Cassie. You? He might tickle you. He's not going to hurt you. Good well, girl. Her lungs sound nice and clear. <laughs> her heart's good. Nice and low rate. They, their rate's around 25 to 32, so... You're kidding. Hey. No. <clears throat> but they don't see too many camels. Uh, Cassie is... Yeah. Other than the camels I saw when I was a kid, well, her rumen's moving pretty good. Yeah. In vet school, we never saw any camels. Oh. And the closest thing I think we work on yeah. To oh, camel is a llama or alpaca, so I am familiar with those. The organ systems and stuff are similar, so I wasn't too taken aback to work on her. You ready for this, huh? You ready to be wormed? <laughs> we'll go ahead and worm her then. Okay. And uh, the last time we vaccinated her, and she shouldn't what need that for. What vaccinations did we give her? Generally, she should get wormed at least twice a year and vaccinated once a year. 
we initially came up a month apart and vaccinated her with her initial vaccination and a booster. And otherwise, if everything goes well, she shouldn't really need too much other care. As she gets older, depending on her way her teeth are, they might need to be taken care of just to kind of keep them in line. Otherwise, they too pretty well. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I think that's all we need to do for now. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna walk her back down there by the truck. Okay. She'll walk, she'll walk right back down there with us. I know, I know, I know. You take her to nursing homes and everything now? Yeah, she'll go everywhere now. She's a very nice camel and pretty good to work with. I guess I'm, I'm fortunate to be working with her and the lions. On rainy days like today, there's a special room in the barn for Cassie to hang out with her family. Okay, I'll see you in about six months, Rob. Okay, Peter. Thanks for coming out. Okay, sure. All right. This room was a design in my mind long in the making. I wanted a room that was symbolic of uh, what I imagined the symbol John Wayne would have done when he jumped off of his horse. Hey, Cassie. Yeah. You want some carrots? Yeah. Come on, carrots? Cassie. <laughs> We're in this room every day. Come Cassie on. associates this as being a playroom for her and a room where she gets treats. So she likes to come in and have treats and cush down on the floor and sort of share time with some of the dogs and cats and even the chickens that come in here. And she knows that there are always treats up on the bar for her. You want some more carrots? I consider Cassie more than a pet. To me, she's a commitment. She's a member of our family. And her well-being um, means everything. I think it does to Rob, too. She brings so much joy into our lives. We smile when we see her. We feel good when we're around her or any, interacting with her. Cassie feels just as good. She's clearly a part of the Lions family. Even the cat doesn't mind a little tail hey, chewing among there. friends. Now her tail. This morning begins like most for Rob Lyon. He grooms his Bactrian camel, Cassie. Today, they'll be visiting a local high school. Good morning. Come here. Normally, we prefer not to visit schools. The attention span on most of the, the students, especially the young children, is very limited. But recently, when asked to visit a school that had high-risk teenagers. And when I say high-risk, they're at that fork in the road of their lives where they can go in either direction. And, and so we decided we would go ahead and visit that place. And it was, the response was amazing. We walked in and it seemed to neutralize the classroom and it, she brought a cohesiveness to the class. Now, Cassie and her family look forward to being regulars in a special art program at a school where the subject matter is Cassie herself. I'm not sure where they stand with their sculptures, but they are in the process of doing them. And uh, we're kind of looking forward to seeing where they are, because last time we took Cassie, she was much, much smaller. They'll come right up to her and pet her. And, uh, Last time they were at their tables, and she walked right over and put her head down at the table. She'll do that today, too. Also, she'll cush. She'll lie down on all fours and just let the kids come up to her. Cassie's very good around people. Uh, the more people around, the better she will be. When nature calls, we, uh, we bring the towels and the supplies to keep everything nice and clean and sanitary, and we are the pooper scoopers. <laughs> No, good girl. Hi, Hi Robert. Robert. Hi, Robert and Cassie. <laughs> We're so happy to have you back again. Welcome. I ran into Cassie last summer at an art fair in Glen Ellen, California. And the owner, Robin, was so wonderful to share so much about her with me. Hey, guys, guess who came to see us again? Ooh. Cassie. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi. I contacted her and asked her if she might consider bringing Cassie to our art class. <laughs> That's not real watermelon. <laughs> Come on over. One of the things that happens with Cassie is that people will giggle and laugh. 
or they will rush up and hug her and give her a kiss. How big will she get? Like the biggest? Oh my goodness, she, she'll exceed seven feet for sure. Does all camels have two humps? No, they don't. The camels that are from China or from Mongolia have two humps, and then the Saudi Arabian camels or Arabian camels have one hump. They're called dromedaries. Does she weigh like a ton or something? Well, probably about... 1,800 pounds, 15 to 1,800 pounds. Yeah. There are several animals that have four stomachs. A deer, a cow, a buffalo have four stomachs. There's only two or three animals that have three stomachs, and those are llamas and camels. She has three stomachs. This is an applied design class, and so what the students do is design and work with various different structural um, ways to develop animals or buildings and redesign them. See, she loves to cuddle. <laughs> With Cassie, it brings us into the moment, opens up our heart, and we lose our intimidation, which then brings out wonderful creativity. She is sucking the tail like it is nothing. <laughs> I'm in my ceramics class and we're working on a sculpture of the camel, Kathy, and we're using a stone fire clay. By looking at her, I could like see her cheekbones and her nose and the way her mouth is, you know, and I can't capture all that with just the pictures. I thought it was so great that she was here at our school and I was like, whoa, a camel, you know, and it's huge. And now she's even bigger, but she was really well behaved. I thought that camels would be like a little bit more aggressive, but she's not. She smelled kind of funny, but like she's really cute. She was really um, nice to everyone. A visit from Cassie doesn't go unnoticed by the principal, Carnell Edwards. This river is for favorite. <laughs> no, Won't even look at me. <laughs> this is Mr. Thomas. He's jealous. <laughs> see? See? Oh, you like that beard. I can't. Oh, she's oh, smiling. <laughs> As we walked into the room and, you know, Cass and I kind of had a natural affection for each other. I don't know if it was the beard or what. But, um, you know, I, I think for to be that close, you know, to to an animal that you normally would see in a zoo or something, for me, was a, was a wonderful experience. Everything has been extremely positive. Kazi kind of brought out the child, I think, in all of us, not just the students, but staff also has been very, very attracted to it. It's not every day that you see a camel in an art classroom or on a high school campus. I'm looking forward to our fine arts night in a, in a couple of months where some of the projects are finished so we can see Kazi in all of the different mediums and art forms. Oh, I think the visit was very successful. The kids um, greeted Cassie with a lot of warmth and open arms, and obviously they're making a lot of progress on the sculptures. And uh, Cassie was pretty good. Cassie was outstanding. She loved being surrounded by all the kids. We enjoyed it very much, and uh, I'm very pleased with uh, Cassie's progress. She's only eight months old, but she's doing quite well, and I'm very, very happy. Be careful, it's slippery. Good girl. I'm certain we'll be invited back by not only the, the teacher, the art teacher, but I think the principal has a special relationship with this camel. So I'm sure we'll be invited back. But first, Cassie gets some dinner before a good night's sleep. Here we go. I'll take care of you. I prefer uh, that she spends the night in a stall whenever the weather's too bad. Actually, I think she prefers to be outdoors. But she doesn't mind being in a stall now, especially if it's raining or something. I think she does understand that it's more comfortable for her. Good night, Cassie. Good girl today. We'll see you in the morning. Oh, you're hungry, aren't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good night. Oh, Hi, girl. Hi, Sinja. Come on, everybody's coming Come home. Cassie has brought unexpected excitement to her parents' retirement and a renewed energy to their mission in life. Our lives have changed considerably. We had um, anticipated retirement would be a time of sleeping in, dancing till all hours of the morning, maybe playing a couple of rounds of golf, definitely horseback riding, and a lot more travel. This lifestyle in retirement has not been what we had anticipated at all. We are now getting up very early in the morning to feed the camel and 
Our activities, our lifestyle is based around the camel. I wouldn't change this lifestyle for that other lifestyle that we had anticipated. It's, um, it's so rewarding, it's so gratifying, and I think that we're both really enjoying this unexpected. Um... <laughs> yeah, you want to give kisses? I hope that people realize that a, a camel is not an animal you own uh, for yard art and then expect to have any relationship with her. You must, it's just like most any other pet, you must spend a great deal of time with her and gain her trust. I have as much concern for Cassie as I do my family members. Her well-being is incredibly important to me. I truly love her. She brings a lot of joy and happiness. I'm very pleased we have her. Uh, she's brought a lot of joy into my life. If she's brought as much into Robin's as she has mine, and I'm sure she has, well, then it's been very beneficial for both of us. I've learned to admit when I'm wrong, and I was wrong, and I admit that, and I'm very pleased she's in our life. You're on Animal Planet. Hang on, the story's not over yet. Another heartwarming pet story is coming up next. These devoted little guys are ready to share their stories with you. So curl up, burrow in, and get ready to be moved. A pet story is next, only on Animal Planet. A new morning. I'm Timberly Whitfield. Have you ever wondered why people fall in love? For some, it happens the first time their eyes meet. For others, it comes much later, after they've discovered each other's qualities, both good and bad. And there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's a mystery that sometimes overrides our sensibility and has the power to both lift us up and destroy us completely. I guess the point is, it can't be explained. It's a riddle that can take a lifetime to understand, as you're about to see on today's show. And talk about looking for love in all the wrong places. When I go home today and tell my family this, they're not going to believe me. Bet you never considered this tender beast. I said a camel. No way we're going to get a camel. Welcome back. Robert Lyon was a confirmed city boy. But when he proposed to his wife, Robin, she said, get a dog and a pickup truck, and I'll say yes. Things have gone quite a bit farther since then. Let's meet this California couple and their menagerie of donkeys, horses, and goats, and birds. Oh, yeah, and one not-so-little camel named Cassie. Hello. 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 Hi, sweetie girl. Hi, girl. My heart was in it. There's no way I wasn't going to do this. I just really believed that I could aspire to do this wonderful therapy with the animals. You guys ready? Come on. There you go. At any given time, we may have maybe up to 80 animals here. We have goats, and we have donkeys, and miniature horses. Do you want to get the ball? Go get it! Five dogs, I think 14 cats. Just a second, sweetie, come on. Well, that's why I want you to hold on, see? 36 parrots. Brat. Brat. Don't call me brat. I don't like that. Hi, Theo. My wife has always been an animal person, and everything I've learned on the rancher and dealing with animals, I've actually learned from her. Swing, swing, swing. Good boy. When she first said we were going to get a camel, for example, I said a camel. No way we're going to get a camel. I wanted a camel because I'd heard about one that had been used with Cornell University and they were using it as a therapy animal. And I was absolutely intrigued by this. So I thought, shoot, if, if they can do it, I can do it. Hi. And I'm going, yeah, right, no. <laughs> I don't want a camel. <laughs> You're crazy. We got a camel. And then I'm the one that fell in love with her 
And then we ended up getting another camel. So now we have two. Yeah, is that good? Get you. Okay, Kazzy. Kazzy's a female Bactrian camel from Asia. Oh, hi, honey. She's six and a half years old, and she weighs 1,700 pounds. Our main thrust in life is taking animals to the ill and the elderly uh, so they can have a few minutes of enjoyment and kind of forget their woes. Watch your toes. We have a trailer that's made especially for her. It's an eight foot trailer from floor to ceiling. But she faces out. So as we go down the road, she'll be facing out looking at all the traffic behind her. And I watch in my rearview mirrors and hundreds, perhaps thousands of people take pictures with their cell phones or with cameras. So it's an interesting experience. Today we're going to go to the Institute on Aging. It's in downtown San Francisco on Geary Boulevard. I think it's like a daycare facility for older people in our society, but it's a very diverse group. Ooh, she's smiling. Cassie <laughs> gives an unconditional affection to anyone that she comes in contact with. There are no visual barriers. It doesn't matter if perhaps you're missing a limb or, or you're blind. She is available. What this does for people is it gets them involved. It takes their mind off of whatever else may be going on in their lives. Can I get by you? Oh, snuggles. You're sweet. There are so many things that an elderly person has to be concerned with. But for the moment that Cassie is there and they're interacting with her, they're living in the moment. She's sweet. Yeah. She's beautiful. Thank you. Cassie loves it. We've taken her several places where she would go to a person and not want to leave that person. And that person had more need for her than we realized. Back. It's been extremely rewarding for us. I think that we get as much out of it as the patients do sometimes. Thank you. I'm glad you like me. How are you doing? Oh, she's so warm. Is she soft? Yes. You want to go home with me, Cassie? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> Kisses like you, Bessie. Uh, I love it. I could do this all day. <laughs> when I go home today and tell my family this, they're not going to believe me that I actually seen a, a camera. They're not going to believe me. You barely fit through there, huh? Nursing professors at the University of Alaska found that having a relationship with an animal helped the elderly cope better with loneliness and stress. Like Robin says, animals give us unconditional love, which is pretty amazing since almost all the animals at the Lion Ranch were unwanted. Even if an owner gives up on their animal, the pet never gives up on us. And that's another mystery of the heart. In Northern California, the sunrise gently bathes the peaceful Sonoma Valley in its golden rays. And the dawn of each day on the ranch of Robert and Robin Lyons signals breakfast to a stable of unusual animals. Every morning, Robert, Robin, and their daughter Lynette are up at first light, preparing and serving up the first meal of the day. Waking up here is very loud, very loud. You hear the birds squawking and they get you up by 6.30. It's like being Dr. D. Little Jr. Ninja Shadow, come on. 
So yes, it is magical. It, it makes us want to live each day and want to enjoy each day. There's no feeling like getting up in the, in the morning wanting and looking forward to the day and wanting that day to occur. <laughs> I mean, there's something wonderful happening every day. And you're constantly surrounded by affectionate creatures. Okay, little guys. You ready to eat, huh? Okay, just, just one or two of you here. One for you. Most of the animals we have here are rescue animals. These four raccoons, their mother was killed. They're almost ready to be released back into the wild. Robin, a former flight attendant, always had a special knack with animals and people. So when she retired in 1998, she began to make her dream of retraining discarded animals into therapy pets a reality. I just believed in dreaming, and this was my dream. I wanted a piece of property that I could call my own and be surrounded by a lot of animals. At the same time, help mankind in, in some way by volunteering. People started dropping off animals to us, and Robin was so good with animals. Boy, oh boy, she would take an animal and just make it a pet. And sometimes an animal that was not particularly nice. And make it into an animal that you'd like to have around you. Orphaned animals found a warm, welcoming home with the lions. Robert, a retired airline pilot, was deeply moved and delighted as the animals responded to his family's kindness. Good dogs. I was not doing it just to appease her by any means. I got to where I truly enjoyed the animals. It started off it's like a snowball rolling down a hill. It ended up as a great big ball that we are truly enjoying. Cassie, hi girl! But there was one more animal that Robin thought would make a wonderful addition to their ark. Come give me a kiss. I was intrigued by uh, research that I found out about someone else using a camel for going into institutional facilities and how successful it was. And I decided if this man can train a camel, I certainly can train a camel. When it was initially brought up, I thought she was just pulling my leg. I thought, yeah, sure, <laughs> fine. But then she kept telling people, and I kept saying, hey, don't, don't tell people we're going to get a camel. We're not going to get a camel. They're mean and they spit and they're nasty. And I didn't see how we could use it in our pet therapy. I just, I was very much against it. He said I was nuts. He said I was crazy. You can't do that with a camel. I think he was surprised at what happened. I would feed the baby camel its formula in a bottle. And the first time he just watched. By the third time he was feeding the camel and it hasn't stopped. And now it's, hey, how do you like my camel? <laughs> it was Robin's dream to start with. She's made it my dream. And I'm glad she has. It's been just great for me. He and the camel are almost joined at the hip. He loves that camel. Okay. There you go. Now you want the apple? And the camel, obviously there's a lot of adoration on her part for him. I pull the bank? Then you will walk around the square for a while, okay? You just like to go see people, don't you? Sure. At least once a week, Kazzy and Robert load up and head to town. Hi! <laughs> That's Kazzy. Many people see the results of what we do, and we have received checks, and so we started an account for Kazzy to help feed her. Hi! Hey, Rob, how are you today? Good. She earned enough money to pay for a trailer specially made for her that's an eight foot trailer from floor to ceiling because we figure that she'll get just about eight feet tall and it's specifically designed for her where she faces out as we drive down the road she's looking out at all the cars and the scenery behind her rob has enjoyed so much spending time with her and this has been wonderful for him in his retirement years because he's very involved in the community and a great deal of it is because of his relationship with Cassie, wanting to share her with others. Giving joy to others by taking the animals to patients and residents at local hospitals and nursing homes is the most enriching part of Robin and Robert's lives. I look forward to every day. And I just cannot wait because I know what it does for them. Some of these people do not have any visitors. They don't have any family that comes to see them. This lady, right now, tonight she will not sleep well knowing these animals are coming there tomorrow. Am I go see Millie? Okay. And she gets to kiss the cow. The residents of the Sunbridge Care Facility in Calistoga enjoy the soft fur and feathers and the gentle acceptance of the animals. 
but for Millie, who is confined to a wheelchair, her hands-down favorite is Kazzy. When she first walked up to Millie, Millie just reached up and grabbed her head and held her and kissed her. And uh, Kazzy kissed her right back. Oh. And we were a little incredulous that uh, an elderly woman, uh, Millie's 83 years old, would reach up and not be the least bit afraid of a camel. I'll bring her right there. Arthur Lish is the center's activities director. He's noticed that Millie is both fascinated and delighted with this gentle camel. Of course, Millie, as with many of the residents, has her problems and her aches and pains and difficulties. But I think this adds a great deal to Millie's life, not just the day Cassie comes, but uh, in between it lasts. It has a lasting effect. Every time the camel comes, Millie is always kissing and hugging, and the camel is responding, and it's been quite remarkable to, to see that relationship develop. There's love at first sight. There is a miracle quality to Cassie in that she is so in tune to each individual that she comes in contact with. And so sometimes, rather than her following our lead, we actually will follow her lead, because she seems to sense things that we don't. Good girl. The lions count their blessings as furry and feathered friends. They've taught me that whatever you give to an animal, and it's true with human beings, if you give them trust and give them love, you get so much more back than you ever give. And I think that I've learned that as I give to my wife or to my children, I get back more than I give to them. It's made me a much easier person to live with. It's made me a better parent. It's made me a better husband. So I've probably gained as much from it as the animals do. Thank you for joining us. Send us the miracles in your life and come back next time for more amazing stories. To dream the impossible dream to fight the unbeatable foe To bear with unbearable sorrow To run where the brave dare not go To right the unrightable wrong To be better far than you are to try when your arms are too weary To reach the unreachable star This is my quest To follow that star No matter how hopeless No matter how far To be willing to give When there's no more to give To be willing to die so that honor and justice may live And I know if I'll only be true To this glorious quest That my heart will lie peaceful and calm When I'm laid to my rest And the world will be better for this that one man, scorned and covered with scars, still strove with his last ounce of courage to reach the unreachable star.